It's the only film which is released uh. without the climax. There's no climax in the मेरी बीवी का जवाब नहीं या मेरी बीवी का जवाब नहीं शी एंड आई होल्ड हैंड्स एंड शी सेज के अब हम बदला लेंगे एंड हम लोग शूट ही नहीं किया बदला तो वहां आता है और फिर उन दोनों ने मिलके बदला लिया इन द एंड कम्स अ सॉन्ग दैट वी बोथ आर हैप्पी मेरी बीवी का जवाब नहीं If you see the last scene of the movie Akshay Kumar is describing it's actually way worse and incoherent than he said trust me it's one of those endings that will really make you think whether creators even try to make it coherent in any shape or form one of the make it or break it moments in any screenplay especially the genre of who done it thrillers is the ultimate reveal of the perpetrators these are moments that may make your jaw drop in astonishment or make you laugh at the sheer absurdity of the eventual outcome everyone knows that the audience lost their mind on the ultimate reveal and gop catching us off guard totally and then you have the conclusion of game of thrones and the annoying face of bran and how that transpired Don't even get me started about the last season and the sheer abomination that it was in terms of clunky writing. Irrespective, you get my point. Through this video I wanted to focus on some of the most illogical and audacious revelations in the end of Hindi movies and series that left audiences confused, annoyed and scratching their head in disbelief for all the wrong reasons. So here is Tried and Refused Productions with 8 worst Bollywood movie or series endings I have ever seen. The Fame Game. One of the most oscillating moods I have gone through just in a span of a few episodes was with the Madhuri Dixit starer The Fame Game on Netflix. The last two episodes of the series absolutely undermined how they developed characters over 6 episodes. Banking on just shock value, it was a reminder for creators on how just because the revelation is unexpected doesn't mean that it makes sense from a screenplay point of view. The far-fetched relationship between Gagan Arora and Amara Anand, a literal stalking psychopath and a star child, was just one thing. But the big reveal of Anamika Anand orchestrating her own kidnapping could have been expanded upon so much better. I constantly wondered that if she's orchestrated this entire kidnapping, the one person that you told and you could trust about this entire charade wasn't the domestic help that was always by your side, who keeps all your secrets, who always had your best interest in mind while you're surrounded by only leeches, and instead you entrusted your erratic, annoying daughter who just flips whenever she wants. What a terrible choice to make. You develop the daughter as this naive, emotional, almost delusional privileged kid only to then convince me that she had everything planned, orchestrated and that she was actually in control all this time. The mastermind handing over money to the abductor in the form of earrings was the most absurd turn coat I've ever seen. Anamika Anand really chose the worst ally and we saw all the red flags from episode 1. Ah One of the most heartfelt storylines from the 2000s was the R Balki directed film Pa, a time where heartfelt family storylines really used to be the flavor of the audience, motivating them to even step into the theater for the same. The case of a boy going through progeria just wanting his parents to reunite showcased extremely convincing performances and a noteworthy screenplay. It's only in the end what was aimed at being sweet really came across as morbid and misplaced as Oro is on his deathbed and he finally gets his last wish of his parents reuniting just to make it up to their son the parents do their saath pheras around Oro acknowledging him as the burning pyre in the middle I found the sequence well intentioned but totally off putting a scene that was not just melodramatic but awkward as hell a statement of a union does not have to be acted out also a case of hindi cinema having the need to spell out everything also making the departure of oro really awkward this is what i describe as the all is well moment i can't just scientifically work towards reviving a stillborn for dramatic effect let's shout all is well in unison and he will be alive chehre One of the most disjointed screenplays recently was the Amitabh Bachchan and Imran Hashmi starer Chehre a thriller that took logic handed it over to an Ahmed Khan mixi and what we got was just an absurd conclusion of events Amitabh Bachchan is a legend no one is going to debate that but when you think that handing him over a 13 minute monologue will rescue a project then you forget that the audience is listening to the dialogues not just the person delivering them the written material comes across as preachy and misplaced rather than an understandable conclusion to the building blocks which was the story The character talks about everything from Nirbhaya acid attacks and the nature of the Indian judicial system that might go viral as an independent piece but it still lacked the punch as its context to the premise just seemed misplaced 
I feel like the creators thought that just because of the ability of an actor like Amitabh Bachchan, you can emotionally draw in audiences, but you should make sense from a screenplay perspective as well and not come across as forced. The concluding aspects of Chehre lead to the most comical action sequence and chase. Imran Hashmi feels cornered and fears he will be hung to death, only for a chase sequence to ensue across the snow-capped mountains. Amitabh Bachchan to be as physically adept as Imran and for Hashmi to hilariously fall to his death as the ice breaks. Coming to the lesson ki agar law break kiya ya to buddho ki palten tumhe pakadegi ya the nature will take its course. Makes sense. Kuch to hai. Ye aise din bhi aa gaye hain ki we're going to unearth some Tushar Kapoor filmography cringe so here we are. There are actually crazy anecdotes of the making of this film from Rishi Kapoor's book on how the creators literally were winging it on how to develop the storyline. The hilarious part about this movie is that throughout the film it leads us to believe that Rishi Kapoor has done all the killings. Through many instances the film hints at the fact that the killer has the capability to be physically strong and overpower more than just regular folk, especially men with ease. When the killer is revealed it is of course Rishi Kapoor, a psychotic killer who keeps his wife's dead corpse with him just to talk to her but only to further reveal that the killings of the female friends and the threat to Aisha Deol is not Rishi Kapoor but none other than the demure Anita because the childhood friend always loved Tushar and in several moments of passion just wanted to remove every close thing in his life logic to skew di hai but the funny part is the confrontation scene when the killer is revealed a romantic declaration is quickly followed by a jump off a cliff i killed everyone to come close to you but now that you know i will kill myself मतलब कुछ भी कुछ कुछ होता है One of my least favorite Karan Johar movies was Kuch Kuch Hota Hai not because of its tropes that were popular in the 90s but just on the hypocritical nature of its protagonist in the form of Rahul played by Shah Rukh Khan it actually was pretty insane on how as the years have passed by the only sane and progressive aspect of the film is Aman played by Salman Khan Unlike Rahul who ridicules Anjali the way she looks falls head over heels for her just because she's in a saree gives her a romantic speech about pyar sirf ek hi baar hota hai aur shaadi sirf ek hi baar hoti hai while he is coping for another stint in marriage you have Aman who has the best cameo reveal who is charming naturally funny respectful of Anjali and her choices and genuinely smitten by her presence one actually wonders what Anjali sees in Rahul other than history but an SRK Kajol story cannot work if they don't unite in the end and Anjali takes the vague decision of choosing Rahul over Aman and Aman being the understanding gentleman that he is actually hands over her to him on his wedding day what a guy he just deserved way better Bob Biswas One of the most interesting career phases has been Abhishek Bachchan 2.0 with the web series like Breathe and ventures like Ludo under his kitty people were genuinely curious to see what Junior AB had up his sleeve Bob Biswas was stylized and quite unique in its execution but its ending definitely rubbed me the wrong way Nowadays there is this obsession with creating franchises or interconnected universes that often times these ideas are bright but lack cohesive structure on the timeline in which the movie is set in kahani bob gets run over by a truck as he attempts to kill vidya the movie bob biswas commences with the same man waking up from a coma having little to no recollection of his life clearly stating that it has been around 8 years since he has been in a vegetable state making us assume that this is a continuation 8 years after kahani only for the end of bob biswas to reveal that his next target is vidya taking us back 8 years now which from a timeline perspective just didn't make any sense this is when you tell the makers of bob biswas this aap chronology samajh lijiye tall at one point of time it was considered that if karan johar's movie started with k they were sure shot going to be financially successful until the horror thriller if you can call it one came called kal the only great takeaway from this movie was that it had a chart busting number with shahrukh khan and malaika that was a rage back in the day otherwise it really showcased over the top performances by an ensemble cast skimpy dresses not equipped for an adventurous day in the woods and a poor ajay devgan trying his best to be mysterious every step of the way As the screenplay progressed a member of the group would die as they would break a rule of the jungle this narrows it down to three of the group out of whom vivek notices the reflection from a well and sees that ajay devgan has no reflection aka the dude's a ghost the actual man eating tiger in the news is a ghost called kali his origin story is hinted at breaking the rules of the jungle himself and paying the consequences to be eaten by tigers only to apply the same rule as a spirit now भाई सब कुछ ज्यादा नहीं हो गया मतलब कुछ भी फोरेंसिक 
I've spoken multiple times on this channel about the odd nature of the Hindi film industry to remake products from other states that are considered to be average in their own language. For example, why would anyone be excited to watch Nikamma if they found middle class Abbai with Nani so forgettable? So was the case with the Malayalam thriller Forensic as Vikrant and Radhika donned the roles of the duo cracking the case in the Hindi remake. The need to change things up can call for a new experience. But my god did the Hindi remake take the most absurd and nonsensical conclusion as the justifiable motivation of killings of children. While the original had the doctor conducting the murders, you have an attractive female psychiatrist played by Prachi Desai who is adopted by a man suffering from cancer. The adopted child by the way, a boy, grows up to become Prachi Desai with a beard and a poorly dubbed man voice. He is a disturbed individual and has violent tendencies, showcased from the very first scene. When he projects the same and kills a child, he notices that the father's health gets better. This becomes his reason to do multiple killings of girls on their birthdays because it directly correlates to her father's health getting better. The angle is so absurd and so unintentionally funny that the movie actually becomes a film that will be remembered for its great talent being absolutely lost in ludicrous execution. You have to really see it to believe it. Not to forget a chase sequence with little people that's one of the funniest scenes I've ever witnessed. And that was the video guys. Write down in the comments below what according to you are the worst endings in Hindi cinema or Indian cinema in general. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram. The handle's right in front of you. Follow me at jammypants4. Also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.